Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, what I'm doing here is building a encoder disk for the top of my metal spindle. And this is the best place I could find to mount it. Now I've got to cut a bunch of notches in here for the encoder to read. And uh, this is going to be a gear hobber, I hope. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a multi-part video. It'll probably be one, I'll probably do a video when I get parts and I'll do other videos in between. Eventually I'll put it all in a series of videos and post it all at once. But next step now is to take this off and cut some slots entered on the rotary table with indexing wheels, index, indexing discs on my rotary table. Got to smooth out some burrs right here too. I made it out of something extra thick. Actually, the next step will be to cut the thickness of this down just a little bit, probably in half at the very edge where the encoder will go over it. So that's the next step. Okay, I'm building this gear auger from a video or a couple of videos on Andy's Machine. Uh, Andy's Machine is a YouTube channel. And I won't go into a lot of detail. I'll put a link to the videos below in the description. But I'm using an encoder that's 200 pulses. There's my encoder. And it's going to have a gear ratio of 12 and 36, which is 3 to 1. So, the small pulley will go on the encoder, so that's going to make my gear blank turn. There's going to be 600 pulses to one turn on the gear blank. So, the encoder pulses are 600, and you multiply that by 64, and uh, this is what's going to create the spindle pulses. This is going to be my encoder disk. And I'm going to go with 300. So 300, or uh, encoder 600 times 64 divided by that gives me a whole number. And Andy says as long as it's a whole number, you're good to go. Uh, the reason I went with 300 is because I got a bunch of saws, but this is the only one that works out right. Uh, in this circumference. This circumference is 15 inches and if you multiply 0 .25, 0 0.025 by 300, no by 600, it's that circumference of 15 inches. And the reason I went with 600 is because you got to count the notches and the solid part. So it's going to be one, two, three. But I'm, it's going to cut 300 slots, but it's 600 divisions. So, hopefully I did that right. So we're going to mount this on the rotary table with indexing plates. Okay, here's my rotary table with the chuck on it. I'm just going to expand the chuck to hold that. And the indexing plates, let me get a good camera angle here. Okay, every time I use this thing, I've got to retrain myself because I don't use it often enough. 
But I went out on the internet and Stuart DeHaro has got an excellent video on how to do it. And he, he really makes it real simple. I'll also put a link to that on the bottom. But just basically, my rotary table is 90 to 1. In other words, it turns, I've got to turn this crank 90 times to turn the chuck one time. So he, he explained that you put 90 above 300, which is how many notches we want. And then reduce that fraction, which comes out to... I'm terrible at fractions. I had to look at my notes. Reducing 9 three hundredths is 3 tenths. So what we got to find is a encoder, I mean a disk with a divisible of 10. Because we've got to do 3 tenths. Well, I'm using the 20 holes, so instead of three holes, I need to move it six holes. And the way you do that, you have this thing called a sector. I think that's what it's called. And you count, in this case, six holes on this, there's 20 holes on this outer ring. You count six holes, so that's one, two, three, four, five, wait a minute, one, don't count that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So you lift up on this pin and I'll put it in that, that hole right there. That's the starting hole. It's a whole, whole lot easier when it's mounted on the mill. You can pull on that without moving everything. But what I'll do is move it from here to right there and then turn this sector back around like that. Cut my slot. Do it again. Move this around. Cut my slot. Move it again. Move this around. Cut my slot. Move it again. Move it around. So you got the idea. Very simple. And I encourage you, if you got a rotary table or indexing head, watch Stuart DeHaro's video. It's a good one. Okay, I had to mount the rotary table on these uh, clamps. Put a couple of these underneath it because this cover I want to put on my DRO is interfering with the crank on my indexing. What I'm going to do here is raise, raise the table up until it hits that saw. There we go, right there. Zero my DRO. And then raise the table half the diameter of that, which is 4.77, I think. That's 2.435. Okay, let's make a mess. I'm going to be at this a while.
It's got one little tooth bent, but I think I can straighten it. It'll be all right. Well, it's fragile though. I didn't realize how thin it was going to be. How thin the... I got one messed up right there. I think I can straighten it out though. Well, I ended up remaking the disc with 150 notches. I feel better about the quality on this one, although there was one little hiccup there. A little short, short tab there. I think it'll be okay though. I was a little worried about the quality of the notches on this one. Some of them varied in width a little bit. I was afraid it wouldn't pick up good. Anyway, that about wraps it up for today. I'll put the link, links to Andy's machines in the description down below. That's where I'm getting all this information on how to build the gear hauber. He did an excellent video and I encourage you to watch it. It's a big learning curve for me. Uh, it requires a Arduino, I, I guess I'm saying that, saying that right. And my brother-in-law is programming that for me. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.